Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. Our region's business. Innovation. Transformation. Momentum. Improving our communities and driving technologies that will shape our region for generations. The collaboration that brings vitality, prosperity, and life to living. Stay with us for the coming half hour as we examine in depth our region's business. Now, here's your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on our region's business, social equity in the public schools and why disparity from district to district and school to school is becoming more and more of a workforce development issue. But first, no matter where you live in our region, you're likely to be affected by the ups and the downs of the city of Pittsburgh. Even though the city represents only about a third of the land area and a quarter of the population of Allegheny County, it represents our entire region to the rest of the world. Such is the power of a brand that's been in the making for 250 years and the power of a place that all but made the modern world as we know it. So the stakes are high for all of us as Pittsburgh's new mayor begins his term in office. And Bill Peduto joins us today. He's the 60th mayor of the city of Pittsburgh. And welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, congratulations, obviously, on the election and the victory, but, but now the inauguration as well. Do you feel like the mayor? Uh, my name's on the door, so that <laughs> helps. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it, it's you know 19 years of getting off the elevator and turning left. You have to really keep it in your mind which direction to turn when you get off. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready for it, and I have a really good team assembled around me, so I feel very confident in delegating some of the work that needs to be done. Well, and you've already gotten kudos in, in the media in town and among commentators for the quality of starting with the executive team. You've yeah. managed to get some really good people yeah. to come and work for the city. A combination between people who have been there before, like Valerie McDonald Roberts and Guy Costa, and then a whole new cast of people, uh, people like Deborah Lamb, who returned home after working worldwide at C40 countries. Uh, one of the people who is recognized as one of the top women under the age of 35 in the world. You know, uh, people like Kevin Acklin, an attorney who took about a 70% pay cut in order to become a chief of staff and a wow. chief development officer, whose job was in mergers and acquisitions and creating companies all throughout this co country. Um, it's a really talented staff, but the nice thing about it, they all work together very, very well. And we've created new opportunities in areas where city government hasn't looked and worked before, like education and workforce training, and brought Dr. Curtis Porter, the former chancellor of Penn State, Greater Allegheny, to city government, where, you know, years ago he had worked for the Urban League, running mm -hmm workforce development programs in 34 states, combining that with his education background to help underserved communities have the tools to help themselves. So uh, we, we have a new group of people, but we also have a new approach to how to govern. And it really is, even breaking the molds with the kind of political patronage that seems to be just the way it's done and has always been done around here, you know, reaching beyond your executive team, what you've asked for resignations from folks who've been appointed to boards and commissions and, and, and other kinds of posts. So uh, really taking a whole new look at the way people get these jobs in the city. Yeah, we've um, had 35 positions either eliminated or the people who were working there uh, no longer working in those positions, and that's where we're starting from. That's our baseline. There's going to be a lot more change that will be occurring. We are looking nationally and even internationally to fill director positions. I had a, a person from Abu Dhabi apply to be the planning director, somebody who's working as a project manager in Abu Dhabi who was a planning person in Chicago who went to Carnegie Mellon about 15 years ago and wants to return to Pittsburgh. And people from all over this country that see Pittsburgh local government as this model of change. Believe it or not, those actually, those words are resonating throughout this country well, because of the process. Well, there's buzz around the world about yes, Pittsburgh. We there see is. it in all the delegations and, that come to visit these and days. You know what the interesting thing about it is and has been, for all the good stuff that's been happening in the city, the city government has been sort of an anchor that's held it back. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is cut that chain. We want to be able to create a new type of city government that catches up with all the good things that are already happening in the city. The, the talent city process has really captured a lot of attention. Uh, the Pittsburgh Foundation's helped make that possible? Right? Pittsburgh Foundation, a few other of the foundations, local corporations that are involved in talent attraction for Fortune 100 companies have all joined together to create the most open process 
for applications in government in American history. Never before has the process been so opened for the top positions. Usually those go to the most loyal of the political contributors or uh, loyal supporters. What we've done is we've looked for the most talented people and said, hey, we're creating a new government. Do you want to be a part? So all of our directors have been going through this process. We've also are opening up boards, authorities, and commissions. Uh, and again, taking away the patronage aspect in order to be able to allow for everyday citizens and those that just have a true desire to work within city uh, as a volunteer, as a board authority or commission member. I'd always thought, though, the whole patronage thing and the cronyism, that's how mayors get reelected. That's how you perpetuate an administration. Do you take some risk blowing it up like this? So I have a lot of friends, right? And <laughs> I have a lot of people who put their necks out on the line for me, a lot of people who opened their checkbooks, knocked on a lot of doors, opened their hearts. And they say, wow, you know, I was really hoping to apply for this position. And I said, you remember why I decided to run? You remember why you decided to back me? It was to change the system. So uh, there's a little bit of a pushback, a little bit of a, a sigh, but at the same time, uh, there's an understanding that these top positions are going to be going through a process that will help us to change city government. That most of those boards, authorities, and commission positions will be going through a way to modernize and get the best people involved in it. We'll still follow some of the protocol and the tradition of having a state representative on certain boards. We'll follow the rules of council to have a council member serve on one board and every council member to serve. That's something we haven't seen in hmm. seven years. Uh, and we'll still have uh, at least two boards with representatives from organized labor, which will be the URA and the SEA, which has been historically how that has been done in the past. Other than those prescribed positions, everything else is open. Hmm. did want to ask you about this executive order this week about uh, not, not putting names and pictures on, on city assets like trash cans. Uh, yeah. So uh, the, the city, the mayor's office has the ability to pre pre present executive orders over city government. It hasn't been done since the days of Dick Caligiuri, so we had to do some research on this. But the first executive order that I signed was to prohibit any present office holder from putting their name on public assets. Mm. You can still have your stationery, you can still have your envelopes, whatever, but when it comes down to trash cans or other things that are part of the public right away, it shouldn't have the name of any public office holder who presently holds office on that, that asset. So, you know, hopefully when we start to do these executive orders and we'll deal with nepotism and other types of ways to get good government in place, we create a standard that will be very difficult to ever go back the other way. Okay, so you see this a lasting, a legacy of your administration ultimately. What we works. hope to do is to put into place a whole new level of standards of how elected officials should behave and how really city government should operate through executive order. All right, well very good. When we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about sort of the, your vision, I guess, for, for the city of Pittsburgh and our region, kind of where we're all headed together. So we'll be back in a minute with Mayor Bill Peduto of the city of Pittsburgh. Stay with us.